So the Raw show opened up with the return of the gigantic Randy Orton. And he came back and essentially he's got business to attend to with the bloodline because they are the ones that put him out for almost two years. And he said there would be RKO's aplenty coming. And Rhea Ripley comes out. This is where she said that, well, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but Judgment Day is the uh, new top act in town. And you've made a lot of enemies. We're going to put you out permanently. And the fans want him to RKO her. But he says, you know, I see this show all the time when I was out. Mommy this, mommy that. Well, daddy's back. Fans chant, who's your daddy? And he says, I ain't going to change. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. And she said, well, you are now an enemy. So Dom and JD, who's in a neck brace, by the way, he's neck strong, hit the ring and they're stomping him down. Randy makes his own comeback. It's JD with the RKO. And then he challenges Dom to a match for later on tonight. Jelly Roll was there, which led to some comedy. Because his name is Jelly Roll. We yeah, take Team Turmoil. Slum American Records, Brian? Bro, this tag team turmoil. You know my most hated thing in wrestling is? What's that? It ain't CM Punk. Music distractions. It ain't The Miz. Oh, okay. Commercial-free hours of wrestling. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. This match... Dave said this match was only 24 minutes. That's impossible. <laughs> it's absolutely, objectively impossible. Crowd was dead for most of it. This crowd in Nashville sucked. <laughs> so we had Alpha Academy versus DIY. Did you give them a whole lot with that? I mean, come on. And DIY won. Then Indu Share and DIY. And it's two on one because they laid out Ciampa and Gargano cradles and, and pins Veer. Like, I don't get it, brother. Creed's and DIY. Creed's got the win with the Brutus Ball. Then we add the New Day in the Creed's, and the Creed's beat the New Day with the Brutus Ball. Fans weren't even into the New Day. And then we had Imperium versus the Creed's, and in this match, they did all the big near falls, kickouts, etc. So the fans got into that because, you know, that's what the fans care about because you always go to commercial during the heat. So uh, they did all that, and then the Creed's hit the Brutus Ball and got the pin. The Creed's are the number one contenders for the tag team titles. They are not ready for prime time skill wise, but my God, they are. They're the sloppy Steiners. You know, once they get a lot better and more experienced, they'll be great. But my God, at least just watching them, it is a, a real breath of fresh air to that division. Then we had Finn meeting with Damien, and he said, Man, we can't take these creeds lightly. And Priest is barely paying attention. And finally he snaps and he goes, I know what you guys, just lay it on me. I failed. I was a leader. I screwed everything up. And Rhea says, no, it's not, it's not a big deal. We made you, even though you made yourself leader, she notes. And it didn't go our way. We're not going to hold it against you. And he said, all right, I guess families do fight. Speaking of families, how's JD? Finn says, he's not good. Let's go check on him. And off they go. This priest is screwed. The day's coming. Cody comes out for a promo, and he addresses CM Punk, says, welcome back. And he says, we all know there's only one destination for me, and therefore I have asked Adam Pierce. I am the first to declare myself for the 2024 Royal Rumble. But in the meantime, out comes Nakamura. This will be his feud prior to the Rumble. And he says, Cody was a great hero. He won his battle. He needed to continue his story. But first, he needs to set Nakamura free. I was patient with you week after week, he said, but now I am done waiting. I will bring chaos to you. They're going to get Okada. Oh, uh, yeah? Doubtful. Are uh, you going to get Muda? I don't want to make bets, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't want to make bets. Good. Okada is not going anywhere. I wouldn't think that so. includes AEW. Yeah. That includes WWE. 
Mm-hmm. He's not going anywhere. He is a Bushi Road priority. But also remember that WWE just signed their new deal with Abema or whoever it was in Japan. And Keiji Muto has been doing a lot of stuff. So I'm sure they want Okada. But I have a feeling Keiji Muto could make a special appearance even though he's retired at WrestleMania. Then we had Bronson and Ivar. And... It was fine, but like my expectations were so high for this match. This was this was and, uh, like superstars from 1990. Well, it was clearly, and they've done this before. This is not the big match. They no. they did something as a teaser with a countout finish, and I will say this: like once they did that countout finish, and these guys started brawling and smashing each other in the crowd. I mean, this place went nuts. They were hot for that brawl in the crowd. And Ivar did a big flip dive off this gimmick onto Bronson on the floor, and everybody came out to break it up. And it was a fun post match brawl. And they'll do it again. Mid cards can be good, and mid card feuds can be good. And you know what I like about this WWE? What's that? This new WWE? What's that? Callbacks. Well, they had a segment with Nia, Zoe, and Shayna. And Nia's blah, 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 blah. And Shayna tells her to shut her hole. That's what she said. As she's shuffling that deck of cards because she's the ace of spades. And Zoe steps in and challenges Nia for later. We had a Judgment Day segment with Truth in the locker room. I can't believe how much time Dave spent on this. <laughs> then we had Nia and Zoe Stark. So uh, every sucks. like every Nia match, something happens where I'm like, what? She so last like the week, Western Kentucky Hilltopper mascot. You know, I don't know. You know, I, I think probably some of you in the uh, Twitch chat, but definitely nobody in the YouTube chat knows this. It's fake. Okay, oh, are you so aware of that? This thing is dark. fake. So last week, Nia is standing on the middle rope, and Raquel is supposed to go up underneath her and lift her up onto her shoulders. Okay. Well, it's fake. So all Nia has to do is keep standing on the middle rope. And when Raquel goes up under, she just pushes on and she just goes up. It's easy. Well, she's standing on the middle rope. Raquel starts to get under her, and Nia takes both of her feet off the middle rope. So now all of her weight is legitimately on Raquel's neck. Raquel almost dies. She finally manages to get her up. I was like, God, is this that hard? So then this week was just bizarre. So Nia's finish is a Yokozuna sit-down splash. We've seen this a thousand times. You lay somebody down, you go up on the middle rope, you jump off and sit on her, and you pin them. That's it, right? So Nia drags her to the corner, and she does this sit-down splash on Zoe, and then stands up, walks next to her, and then lays down and pins her. I thought... What in? Why did you do that? Probably because Zoe made a sound that hurt. You why know did I you? Mean? Well, hold on to the ropes and then take your weight off Zoe. Brian, there were a couple of things during that match. I won't belabor the point, but she's a terrible professional wrestler. And I know well, you've never been in the ring. I don't have to be in the ring because I have enough like active and people who were professional wrestlers say she's a terrible professional wrestler. I, I just, you know, I know she's got a place. She can have a place on the roster. But it's not wrestling week after week after week in these matches. Use her as a special attraction. Use her like you would use Omos or something like that. But, I mean, my God, these matches are terrible. We had a Gunther segment where Miz walked up and wants a rematch. And Miz says, I'm sure I can beat you for the title. I know it, and I think you know it. And Gunther says, I beat you the other day. You brought your A game. You proved you belong in the ring. But not with me. And he leaves. I howled. They're going to do that match again. Can you believe it? Seth does a promo, and uh, I hope I have time for this. The best thing in WWE right now is this Drew McIntyre story. Because Seth comes out, and essentially he says, I got to talking with Adam Pearce. And first, you know, he buries CM Punk and everything. Then Drew McIntyre comes out, and he says, you know, you told me when you beat me, the blame was all on me, and it would be the best thing that ever happened to me, and you were right. And so I want to shake your hand. And uh, I am coming for that title again someday. And Seth says, well, you know, I got a, I got a title match already coming up next week. So Drew McIntyre says, well, if I may ask, who's it with? And Seth says, Jay Uso. 
who, by the way, is not only Drew's arch rival, trigger word, but Drew beat him clean a week ago. So now Drew is furious, and he snaps. He headbutts Seth Rollins, and he kills him, lays him for dead. They send out all the. Actually, they sent out Jay to break it up, and then we had a follow up later, which doesn't directly tie into this, but it does. We'll talk about that after the break. Observer Live. New character is awesome. Yeah, he because is. he is justifiably angry. But, of course, the issue is he takes out his anger in the wrong way. Mm. But anyway, he's all furious that Seth has given this title match to this guy that he hates and he just beat. And then the very next segment is, uh, well, actually, it's a little bit later. Uh, there's, a, there's a segment with Sammy where, you know, he's talking to Drew and Drew ends up challenging him to a match for next week. But a little bit later on in the show, uh, Randy Orton meets with Jay Uso. And, of course, Jay Uso also, his family killed Randy Orton. Just like they screwed Drew. And Jay apologizes to the guy. <laughs> That's all Drew wants is an apology. And bro, this Jay's going around apologizing to this guy, that guy. Not apologizing to Drew. So man, now Drew's really going to want to kill this guy. Bro. But anyway. So, oh, go ahead. Well, a couple of other segments. Chelsea and Piper beat Natty and Tegan for the tag titles, which was, uh, it was just there. It was just a match. Uh, Dom versus Orton. Orton beat him with the RKO. I like this match. It wasn't like a great match or anything like that. But man, Randy Orton coming back after two years. First match back. This guy's so good. And he uh, he beat this guy with the RKO. And that led to our main man, Phil, coming out for that promo there at the end. Just spilling his heart out to all of his friends, fans. Yes. You know what I like about Drew? He's tied in with Rollins right now. He's tied in with Zane. He's tied in with Jay. He's tied in with Damian Priest. At some point, he's going to be tied in with Orton, I'm sure. And the thing is, even if he's not going to resign, you have a bunch of people that can't wait to get rid of him for his attitude. But if he does resign and he's going to be there long term, man, what a perfect lightning rod for everybody. I think he's been fantastic. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.